Do you want to play a game? The movie opens with a man named Edgar Munson being pursued by the police. He crashes his car into police cruisers, runs to a rooftop, and grabs a remote trigger. But before pressing the trigger, the police officers hold him at gunpoint, demanding that he surrender. Despite their orders, Edgar adamantly refuses and insists on meeting the head detective. Shortly after, Detective Halloran shows up and questions him about his motives. Edgar explains that he must initiate a game in order to ensure his own survival. Unbeknownst to the police, a timer is counting down, compelling Edgar to activate the trigger. With no other choice, he pulls the trigger, resulting in the officers shooting off his hand along with the remote. Tragically, one of the bullets strikes his chest, causing him to collapse. The scene then cuts to a room where five people, Anna, Ryan, Mitch, Carly, and an unconscious man, are chained to a wall with buckets covering their heads. After a short while, a recorded message from a person named John Kramer, also known as Jigsaw, begins to play. Jigsaw explains the rules of the game. Each person must shed their own blood in order to survive before the chains gradually draw them toward a wall lined with buzz saws. As the saw blades begin to rotate, the chains connected to each bucket helmet start pulling the captives closer to the perilous wall. Terrified and with no options left, Anna sacrifices her own body by allowing her arm to be cut. This eventually releases her from the chains. She then urges the others to do the same. Ryan and Mitch follow her example, while Carly, overwhelmed with panic, gets cut from behind. The fifth person remains unconscious and is unable to comprehend what needs to be done, leading to his unfortunate demise. That dude was playing with some serious handicaps on. In the next scene, we see a woman going for a jog in the park. She pauses near a crowd gathered by a bridge and becomes horrified when she notices a lifeless body suspended from it, with a bucket covering his face. Later, the body is taken to the morgue, where forensic pathologists Logan Nelson and Eleanor Bonville examine it. A few moments later, Detective Halloran and his partner Hunt enter the laboratory. The pathologists then carefully remove the bucket helmet from the victim's head, only to make a gruesome discovery. The face has been severed in half, presumably by a buzzsaw. <laughs> You guys seeing this? Looks like the work of a buzzsaw. In addition, they find a small chip embedded in the victim's neck. Upon inserting the chip into a computer, they are startled to hear a recorded voice belonging to Jigsaw, revealing that only four individuals remain. The four trapped victims are now confined within a barn, with chains still fastened around their necks. Moments later, a Jigsaw puppet emerges into the room on a tricycle, carrying a sign that reads, Confess. Confused by the message, the victims begin confessing their minor transgressions. However, their efforts prove futile as the chains start pulling them towards the gears, positioned in the center of the room. Luckily, Mitch manages to grab a tape located beside the puppet, causing the chain movement to loosen up, and also revealing that the chains are connected to the ceiling. Soon after, three syringes descend, each containing identical-looking substances. Upon playing the tape, they are greeted with another recording of Jigsaw, in which he exposes Carly's past misdeed as a purse snatcher, revealing that her actions inadvertently led to the death of an asthmatic woman. Now, to prevent the others from being hanged, Carly must inject herself with one of the three needles, one containing an antidote for a poison within her body, another filled with saline solution, and the last one containing acid. Carly notices that one of the needles bears the number 3.53, which matches the precise amount she stole from the deceased asthmatic woman. Suddenly, the chains begin pulling the four individuals upward, constricting their airflow. Ryan implores Carly to make a choice, but her refusal forces him to stab all three needles into her neck. The action frees them from the chains, but tragically results in Carly experiencing a painful and fatal demise. In the aftermath, Detective Halloran discovers Carly's lifeless body outside a building, with her face disfigured by the corrosive effects of acid. Logan and Eleanor examine the body and discover another jigsaw-shaped flesh chunk missing. This revelation leads them to suspect that John Kramer, the original jigsaw killer, may still be alive. And for those of you who haven't watched the Saw franchise, he died in the third part. So, the police commissioner insists on exhuming John's body from the cemetery as proof of his demise. Hunt takes charge of this task, and upon opening the coffin, he shockingly discovers Edgar's lifeless body inside. Apparently, someone kidnapped him from the hospital and brought him here. Back at the Death Trap farm, the remaining three victims come to realize that they have been brought together due to their past wrongdoings. As a result, Ryan confesses that he cheated on his wife, while Mitch admits to selling a faulty bike to a young man who later died in an accident. 
moment. However, Anna asserts her innocence, explaining that her husband unknowingly rolled over their sleeping baby, resulting in the tragic smothering of their child. As they proceed to the next task, Ryan attempts to exit through a door marked with a no exit sign, but this action causes his foot to become ensnared in razor sharp wires concealed beneath the floorboards. Mitch and Anna rush to his aid and discover another tape hidden beneath the floor. Upon playing it, they realize that this particular trial is not a test, but a means to punish those who seek to take shortcuts in life. After this, Mitch and Anna begin searching for an escape route, but find themselves ensnared in a silo, consisting of a television screen. Jigsaw materializes on the screen, explaining that Ryan must activate a hidden lever beneath the floorboards for Mitch and Anna's survival. With this message, grains start cascading from the vents above, but Ryan grapples with his inner turmoil and cannot bring himself to pull the lever. After a brief pause in the grains' descent, a series of deadly objects plummet down, including a rake, knives, needles, and buzz saws. Eventually, Ryan summons the courage to reluctantly pull the lever, thereby rescuing Anna and Mitch. However, this action results in the wires severing his own leg. On the other hand, Logan meets up with Eleanor at a bar. As their conversation unfolds, Eleanor reveals that she is a fervent admirer of Jigsaw. She then invites Logan to her studio, which contains various recreations of Jigsaw's traps. While she acknowledges her profound captivation with Jigsaw's work, she also harbors concerns that her involvement may link her to the recent string of murders. Unbeknownst to them, Hunt covertly surveils their meeting, capturing photographs and subsequently reporting their actions to Halloran. Back at the barn, everyone's attention is captured by the headlights of a truck. Mitch approaches the vehicle and discovers a tape with his name on it. As soon as he hits the play button, he is hung up by his foot with wires and slowly descended towards a device designed to shred him. In the next tape, Jigsaw reveals that the young man to whom Mitch sold the motorcycle was actually his own nephew. Moreover, Jigsaw accuses Mitch of intentionally accepting 600 bucks from the man despite being aware of the defective brakes. Now to succeed in this game, Mitch must descend into the contraption and pull the brake handle to halt the shredding mechanism. Soon, the game begins, and Mitch gradually descends towards the menacing blades. Witnessing this dire situation, Anna grabs a rod and attempts to stop the mechanism by disrupting the motorcycle engine powering it. While she manages to temporarily halt the device, the rod eventually breaks, reactivating the mechanism and leading to Mitch's horrific demise as he is entirely shredded. Filled with fear, Anna tries to flee, but she ends up being apprehended and knocked out. Later, at the police station, Hunt presents Halloran with the photographs from Eleanor's studio, prompting an investigation of the premises. Upon arrival, they stumble upon a corpse resembling Mitch. In response, Halloran promptly orders the arrest of both Eleanor and Logan. Acting on this command, Hunt moves to apprehend Logan. However, the latter manages to persuade Hunt that Halloran is the true culprit, highlighting that he was the one who fatally shot Edgar in the chest earlier. With this information in mind, Hunt goes to confront Halloran to inquire about the ongoing case. In the next scene, Logan arrives home, only to find Eleanor awaiting him. She discloses that she has found out about the location of the game. The duo then depart for the barn, unaware that Halloran is secretly tailing them. Elsewhere, Anna and Ryan awaken in a basement, finding themselves chained to a wall. While a man with a pig mask stands before them, the masked figure soon unveils his true identity as John Kramer. John addresses both of them as having done reprehensible actions. According to John, Ryan was reckless in his youth and caused his best friend to get into a fatal car accident. As for Anna, she actually suffocated her own baby and planted the body next to her husband to frame him. That is, yeah, she, yeah, she should die. For their final trial, John presents them with a shotgun loaded with a single shell, proclaiming it to be their key to freedom. After John departs, Anna hastily reaches for the shotgun with the intent to kill Ryan. Succumbing to selfishness, she grabs the weapon and pulls the trigger, but to her misfortune, it backfires and blows her brains out. Ryan then discovers that the keys to their restraints were concealed within the shotgun shell all along, but now the keys are damaged beyond repair and there is no way to free himself from the chains. On the other hand, Logan and Eleanor arrive at the barn, but they are soon ambushed by Halloran. The detective then relentlessly pursues Eleanor. However, just as he is about to catch her, an unidentified assailant appears out of nowhere and administers a drug that incapacitates Halloran. A short while later, Halloran and Logan regain consciousness, only to find themselves in collars rigged with laser cutters. 
matters. A voice booms through the loudspeaker, informing them that they must confess their sins. And if they do so, the lasers will deactivate automatically. Scared, Logan is the first one to crack. He admits to having mislabeled John's x-rays in the past, which resulted in the undiagnosed progression of his cancer. Despite his confession, Logan is apparently killed. Filled with fear, Halloran then reveals that he allowed innocent individuals to perish, while allowing true criminals to escape in exchange for his own personal gain. This finally stops the lasers and saves his life. Right then, Logan unexpectedly rises, revealing that he orchestrated his own apparent death using the fake laser cutter. He then removes the device and walks over to pull off a sheet, revealing the decomposed remains of Anna and Ryan. In a stunning twist, Logan discloses to Halloran that he was the fifth unconscious person in the initial trap, alongside Anna, Ryan, Carly, and Mitch, and that the incident occurred a decade ago. This revelation reshapes the entire film as a partial prequel. Logan further explains that John spared his life, knowing he made a simple mistake unlike others, and recruited him as an apprentice to continue his legacy after his passing. From that moment onward, Logan pledged to carry on John's legacy of retribution against the guilty. Moreover, Logan unveils that he captured Halloran, as he had been a very corrupt cop. He also reveals that he recreated the barn games, using other criminals that Halloran had let go as his victims. It is also unveiled that Logan was the one who shot Edgar in the chest. Now, with Halloran's confession captured on record, Logan reactivates the collar, resulting in the severing of Halloran's head, ultimately bringing an end to the jigsaw. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.